All those pictures are publicly available through the uh, Coast Guard website. I like to know some of them are, are, many of them are copyright. I should do my disclaimer here. You shouldn't use copyright images and papers unless you cite them or unless your teachers say that it's okay to do that. But uh, uh, the list of resources I'll pass out here in a few minutes are on the handout that somewhere uh, has the, the website uh, in case you want to use those pictures. Uh, but it kind of gives us just a sense of the magnitude of the oil spill and, and the breadth of issues that it brought up between people, social issues, political issues, scientific issues, media issues, all those different kinds of things. So it really is uh, an event that, that covers a, a broad reach. I want to talk now just a little bit briefly about the geology of the oil spill. And the geology is important because it's the most important topic in the world when Rick Lezinski is in the, in the house. And uh, because the idea of drilling for oil isn't going to go away. And the dangers of drilling for oil isn't going to go away. So we should know a little bit about where the oil comes from and maybe consider why there's such demand oil. So let's move to the most important part of the seminar in some people's eyes, and that would be the geology of the Gulf oil spill. I want to um, introduce it by way of, and I hope this connection works very well, a video that was produced in Australia on crude oil, and I think the paleontologists in the group will enjoy this as well. Again, this is something that's publicly available, so you can go back and uh, Check it out a little bit later on. I'm happy, you always welcome to email me. I'll send you the link. <coughs> We're just going to watch a minute of this. But I think it does a good job of explaining where oil comes from. That's Rick's pet bird. <laughs> It was sea, not sand, that dominated the Arabian Peninsula at the time of the dinosaurs. If you could have been there, and if you'd watched closely, you would have witnessed the secret to how our modern 21st century was born. Keen-eyed predators were on the lookout for food, and there was plenty of it about. The mid-Jurassic Ocean was alive with microscopic plankton. Schools of ancient fish gorged on the rich pickings, attracting unwanted attention from the prehistoric depths. But it's not who's doing the eating that's important here. It's those being eaten. The most important organism on our planet. <laughs> it's the long lost blooms of tiny photosynthetic plants and bacteria, sun baking at the surface, that have reached through time to control called? our modern lives. Phytoplankton. It's from these harvesters of ancient sunlight that the petrol in your car was born where diesel, jet fuel, and plastic shopping bags began life. This is the start of the extraordinary story of oil. All right, All right so that's that video. Hit the lights again, please. So oil comes from microscopic plankton. How many people knew that? A couple of you. Now, every time you start up your car, you can say, thank plankton. Right. <laughs> oh, if that was a little bit too complicated for you, there is another version of this, and I want to show it to you quickly, again, because I think you're living the modern age, so video really... <coughs> Here's another take on the Enjoy. same story. It's our most important natural resource. It's our main source of energy, and we all... We also use it for making plastics, as well as roads. 
But now we're running out. So why can't we just make more of it? For that, you need to know how it's made. in this century. It starts with one base component, microscopic marine life. First, and most importantly, it needs to be dead. subjected to extreme amounts of pressure. <coughs> Next, it needs to be heated strongly. <laughs> needs to be left for a long period of time. <laughs> and finally, we end up with crude oil. existed, maybe went away or had uh, the, the ocean, these organisms sedimented down as you heard, dead marine life in an anoxic zone, places of little oxygen. They were buried, subjected to high pressure. The longer they're buried, the more they heat up and eventually if conditions are just right and there's a lot of places where oil doesn't form and if you think about the world distribution of oil, it's pretty, pretty rare. Uh, even though there is enough of it, you know, or has been enough of it up until this point in time. So those similar processes happen in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the deep water horizon well, and here you see the very hummocky or kind of looks like dunes or sand dunes kinds of appearance around the well. These are salt diapers. It's salt that's been buried, and there's oil in those formations. And if you look at a uh, a seismic reflection profile, they basically go out and they used to throw sticks of dynamite over the ship and then listen to the return echoes. But each one of these lines represents time of a return echo off a layer of rock underneath the gulf. And this is a kind of an A-shaped here. And when I took Rick's class, he taught me that an A-shaped feature is what? Have they had that yet in their class? Next week. Next week. Should I wait? No, it's an anticline, okay? So, and you can see some of those, uh, and Dr. Lezinski will teach you all about that. If we take the sort of diagrammatic view of it, we see these layers of rock, and they actually look something like this. I went down to the well and, and got this piece of rock for you. Uh, I'm gonna pass it around, but with all the people here, make sure it gets back. Um, so oil is buried at almost three miles underneath, actually almost two to three miles underneath the surface, uh, underneath sea level, two miles of rock 
they're drilling down into you to get at this reservoir of oil. The interesting thing, or maybe I should say the, the uh, risky part of this is drilling in a mile deep of water. And as our thirst for oil grows and as our need to uh, <coughs> help cities and cars and all those kinds of things grows, we have to look for more, more sources of oil. And one of the places to do that is in the deep ocean. Uh, and part of the risk that BP took was drilling in the deep ocean and really not paying enough attention to safety. Um, there's a really good animation on, on YouTube, an oil drilling animation. Again, uh, I'll have these slides posted for those you want to uh, check it back, but it kind of shows you how drilling muds are used, how cement is used in the casing. So if you're interested a little bit in oil exploration and drilling, this is a great YouTube video for that. Stop me, because this was some of the first video that was produced. Uh, one of the senators insisted that BP show us what's going on. They weren't down there with a TV crew, but a remotely operated vehicle, otherwise known as an ROV, with a camera and a cable, a mile long cable up to the ship, was shooting these pictures of the oil spinning. So when, the, when they're rigged, and you saw that big huge thing in the pictures, when it sank, it just basically busted the pipes. So where the where the oil well was, there was something called a blowout preventer, and it had tubes that were running through some other things and up to the ship. This is what you're seeing here. This is the pipe. If you go this way, you go to the blowout preventer, and then down to the well, and the oil is spewing out. The most amazing thing to me is over the couple months that this leaked. Almost, uh, I haven't counted the exact numbers of days. The total amount of oil leaked equals a quarter of our daily consumption in the United, in the United States. Doesn't sound like, you can look at that two different ways. Not much oil, or we consume a hell of a lot of oil. The total release was equal to 337 Olympic sized pools, just like we have out here, so next time you walk by the pool, think of it full of oil times 337. Uh, there's a really good uh, PDF file on the um, Times Picayune site. The Times Picayune is a newspaper in New Orleans. They were really, uh, they actually, I think they won some Pulitzer's for their coverage during Hurricane Katrina. Uh, it's a good link to check out. And, Word has it that their contingency plan wasn't very good in case something like this happened. They put these guys in charge and 